Here is the user's guide for the field effect transistors. In the ECSP program, field effect transistors are represented by this element here. And the model supporting this element is here. Here you have a current source between the drain and the source. And between and the, ga the gate and the source, you have a capacitor. For accurate description of the model, I refer to the literature. I will not do it here. Uh, in the input mask of the element, you can input the following values, basically the k-factor, which is the amplification factor. Then you have the gate source voltage and you have the threshold voltage. Threshold voltage is what you can see here. Go to the literature. In the saturation region, this is the formula for the current. Then you can input additionally also the yearly voltage. Let's go to the simulator. The field effect transistor elements are here. It's drag and drop as usual. If you double click, you get the input mask. Here are the values you can input. So this is this K factor I was talking about. It's milliamps per voltage square. Then this is the threshold voltage. Here you have the total value of the gate source voltage. You have a cursor here where you can just visually see what happens gate capacitance, here is the slope, the IDU, the red curve here. Then we have uh, the yearly voltage. You can see that the yearly voltage introduces a slight slope in the drain current curve. If I have a higher number here, you see that the curve is then flatter. And if I have a smaller one, it's steeper. So let's run this demonstration now. I go with uh, 20 milliseconds, 2000 steps. So you can see here now is uh, my field effect transistor. Then I have here a voltage source, triangle voltage source between the drain and the source. And here I can adjust my gate voltage. So I do so. And you can see now that the current, the drain current is changing. I measure the drain current here. In this area here, this area here, we are below the saturation region. And from here to here, we are saturated. And you see that despite of the relatively hefty change in the drain source voltage, I see no change in the drain current. So if I increase my resistance at the drain, you can see that the saturation region starts later because the voltage between the drain and the source collapses. So far I had a positive threshold, I can also go to a negative threshold voltage and in this case the field effect transistor would start to conduct with a negative gate source voltage. How can I do this? This is now with a positive gate source uh, threshold, you can see the threshold starts here. So up to the threshold there is no drain current. If I introduce now a negative threshold, let's go for minus one, you see that I have a line when the gate source voltage crosses zero. So above zero, you can see that uh, the gate source voltage is positive and below zero it's negative. I can even go to the extreme and make the gate source voltage much, much bigger, that means more negative. Then you can see that the whole gate source voltage would then be negative. And this was an n-type field effect transistor. If I go to the p-type field effect transistor, it's exactly the same. Just everything is negative instead of positive, but all the rest is the same. And here I have the flipped version of the same device. So here I have now a real amplifier. I have a signal 0.5 volts and I want to amplify it and measure it here. So let's run it. We go to the continuous mode and we go for uh, 20 milliseconds, 1000 steps. And you can see now how this is the single voltage, 0.5 volts, and this is the amplified voltage. And I see that I have already a slight distortion. So we have to be very careful with the distortion because of this long non-linear gate source characteristics we have seen before. We can also go and have a look at the frequency spectrum of this amplifier. So we go to the frequency mode and uh, let's go between 1 hertz and let's say 10,000 hertz. 
so this is how it looks like so this is the output voltage here we have the input and on this side we have uh, the phase shift and we can also observe the behavior at one single frequency uh, let's go for example to 1000 Hertz just to make a check and here we can see this is the output uh, voltage this is the input voltage much smaller here this one as usual I recommend to test it yourself on www.ecsp.ch this is where you get the simulator